Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. Today I would like to show you how to create this solitary ring, specific about this wavy design underneath the stone. Are you ready? Let's get started. In this tutorial, we are going to starting with the center of a stone, building the prong. Then we're gonna work with the handle, and then we're gonna start in building this uh, red color surface to fit it into this taper ring. As starting from the scratch, so we are going to start at the front view, and I'm going to snapping in the zero. And for the ring size, I'm going to set it up diameter for 16 millimeter. So using the circle command, that you can simply make in this circle. And then I'm going to calling a stone. You can subscribe my newsletter at the link below and I will have a stone file for you to download. After you copy paste the stone into the file and we are going to, you can edit it to whatever size that you wanted to do. So for example, I'm going to a little bit smaller like this. Okay, so we are going to moving the stone to the top and start making the prong set for it. You can use the circle command to draw another circle and this circle can be something just a little bit smaller than our stone size coming roughly like this with this circle i'm also going to use the offset command so you're going to offset this curve for whatever thickness i'm going to set it up for 0.8 millimeter and simply just extruded this one straight up for something like this. This is going to be the under bezel, the metal underneath the stone to support the stone over there. Okay, if you like the button to be tapered, you could use the gumbo and hold the control and shift command, click right over here and simply just scale it down, something like this. Okay, once you like it, we're going to take a look how we're going to create a prong. Simply, we are going to use the polyline and draw a straight line, follow the same uh, tilted angle with our under bezel. And simply, we're just going to pipe this guy. So we're going to use the pipe command and let's do roughly about one millimeter in the rate uh, in the diameter so it's 0.5 millimeter for the radius visually take a look if this is too fat uh one more thing pay attention you do not want to cut the prong like so much like this you want to do about less than 25 percent Okay, now I have this prong. I would like to them to go more. Uh, in this case, I like six prong. And so simply I'm just going to use the polar array and we're gonna snapping into the zero and the number of the item right here on the top, I'm just going to type it six and hit enter. Um, then we want a six, uh, uh, 360 degree and then we'll get something like this all right so this is for the center one uh, we don't need the prong that high for the rendering purpose but for the setting you do need a prong over the table of the stone so let me go ahead to group them together and we are going to um, work with the handle so first of all let me bring a copy down here by using the gumball and hit the all key here and then i'm going to scale it down for some something like this and bring up something like this. Now on the right view, I wanted this guy go lower and actually tilt it a little bit. All right. And then we want to move in thing as close to the center stone as possible. So let's give it a try. We're going to have this stone. Uh, we can adjust the size later and see what's going to fit the best, but we want to do the polar array snapping into the zero. I roughly want about 12 of them. I, you, you want to have an even number since we have this six prong right here. And then um, let's make sure that we record a history on the bottom right here and then we want to do 360 degree and we'll get something like that now notice that the stone is jamming into each other that's okay we can move it out a little bit so then they will have more space in between ideally you want to have about 0.1 millimeter to 0.2 millimeter in between each of the stone all right so now we have a stone arrangement okay then we are going to do the prong on the bottom as well you can simply just creating a cylinder uh, we're going to have something about this smaller than the stone that we have and coming down 
now here for whatever thickness right there okay it doesn't have to be too thick because everything will be including inside of the um the wavy shape so we are going to tilt it this one over here and moving in a little bit as also you're not gonna see much from the top that will be fine and we're gonna kind of moving this one right here okay so this is where the underneath the bezel and we will need to create in the prong for this one as well let's take a look on the right view creating a straight line from here to here and we're going to pipe it so let's go ahead to pipe uh, using the pipe command and we're gonna do um, a little bit smaller so maybe 0.35 to make it 0.7 millimeter in diameter and we'll get our prong like this now double make sure if the prong look okay to you if that look okay to you we also need to have a shared prong inside so i'm going to moving our uh, pipe and just making a copy with my gumball just hit Okay, so we'll get something like this. Notice that now the prong is cutting into the stone too much. So I'm going to move it up something like this. Also, I want to take a look on my right view. This prong right here is way too tall. So that's moving it down. As long as you have a taller than your um, stone, that will be fine. All right, so this prong look okay. I just need to have them moving out a little bit and double make sure that prong is not stick too much to this main prong. If it does, we want to tilt the angle a little bit because if it's completely stick in there you have no tool to bend it open right so let's take a look on this and see if that work for you if that work for you let's go ahead pick up this one and this one we wanted to do is to do polar array and remember the number that we had was 12 so we are going to snapping into the zero and just using the same, same number 12 by record history and we hit enter and then we'll have all the prong ready double make sure that the prong on this side and this side is the same if it is not you can kind of moving this around uh, because the, the other one will follow okay so i'm going to have it go back to whatever position it is now we have everything there i'm going to the other layer and kind of locking what we have here and take a look how we are going to making that flower things first of all i would like to have the petal to be six of them so the petal need to go from here to here uh, something easier to be more accurate is i'm going to draw a line starting from the zero and coming out about right here and with this curve or this line right here i'm going to use the rotate command and going to snapping into the zero right here coming over here for 30 degree and I want to make sure I want to make a copy. So right here on the top, I want to copy equal yes. And for 30 degree here for one and also minus 30 degree for two. All right. So now I have something like this. I'm going to build my model within this area. So let's go ahead to creating an arc. This arc is going to snapping somewhere about right here and also somewhere about right here and bring it up as long as this is bigger than cover the third prong right there and that will be a good curve to use now we just need to make sure this curve and go all over so let's go ahead to use the polar array one more time snapping into the zero and this time i just need six of them and we're creating this curve Let's go ahead to join all the curve right there. And you can make it more puffier if you like to. Uh, for this demonstration, I will stop tweaking and show you what to do the, the next. So we are going to use the command right here. This one, it's called uh, fitted corners. And I want it to be nice and round. So maybe giving a fitted for one so everybody have that corner right there okay so that is one and again you can scale it up and down and see how you like it i'm also going to move it to the place that is supposed to be roughly about this place right here okay now the second thing is i'm going to draw a circle right in the bottom so i'm going to hit zero and make sure you disable your o snap and then we're gonna move in roughly about right here it depends on how tapered that you wanted to have i'm gonna move in this one up right here okay to creating the surface we're simply just going to use the loft command and we are going to loft 
in between this curve on the green one and also this one on the bottom, right? So then that will create some sort of a curve like this, the surface like this. If this surface is too um, straight, it doesn't look nice to you. What you can do also is you can creating the cross section. So let's go ahead to using this arc. I'm going to snapping into this quadrant right here and also this quadrant right there and give it a little bit puffier surface, a puffier curve right there. Now with this curve, I'm going to use a sweep to rail. We're going to use a rail one and this is rail two. This is cross section and we're creating the surface like that. It's more rounded surface there. All right. So I'm going to use that surface and just giving the extra surface um, outside by offset the surface. Okay, so we're going to have it 0.65 millimeter for the thickness, that's okay. And we don't need it to be solid. And we want them coming outside. So we're gonna flip all the arrow outside and to get something like this. All right, so now I get this um, surface there to close the surface in between. I simply just go into blend in between. So we're gonna use a blend surface. Make sure the chain edge is click. So I'm gonna pick up the first, pick up the second, and hit enter. And then we can have something like a really bump uh, surface you want. If it likes too bumped for you and you're just gonna move it back a little bit, like tone it down a little bit, and then we're gonna click OK. All right, on the bottom, we can use the blend command as well. That's using blend surface. And we want to change the surface go from here and here and hit enter. And we don't need that thick there. We're just going to bring it down. And it's okay like if this is not perfect because probably that part will be cut off. All we need to do is join them together so they will become solid. Okay, now we have this one. We have everything. And if this is like too big for you, you can still kind of work on it, make it smaller. But keep in mind that you will change the thickness as well. Right, so if you don't want it to have so, so much space, maybe you want to bring in more like this way. All right, all the extra on the prong, we will need to trim it off. Okay, so let's go ahead to take a look. I'm going to create on the other layer and locking both of them. We want to create some sort of the cross section for our ring. So let's go ahead to creating a rectangle with a conic corners. And we're going to snap in right here for whatever thickness that we wanted to have for something like this. And I would like to use the move command to move this one to the side. And I also like to mirror to the other side. OK, so once we have that, if we are going to use the sweep one rail, we can use this as a rail. This is a cross section and we'll get a ring like this. But this ring will be all the way the same thickness. So my goal is to create something that's a little bit wider on the bottom of the ring shank and on the top it needs to be a little bit taller. So I'm going to hiding both of uh, the head and also the, um, the green part right here and we are going to take a look on this ring only. So let me move the ring to this layer, something like that. Okay, so and then we are going to creating another rectangle conic corner and we're going to snap in right here to do something a little bit taller and something like this. All right, and then we are going to moving this back to the center as well. Okay, now we have this, we can do the sweep one rail. We're gonna starting from the rail one, two, and three over there and make sure they all align. In this case, they are all aligned to the outside and I just need to make sure that one is all aligned to the quadrant. All right. And then uh, I'm going to make sure that I record a history so I can alter it later. And then we want to click something, uh, click on it and then cl close the sweep and click OK. All right, if we open what we have over there and this ring is obvious is way too high, what we can do is we can pick up this one because we record a history, we can do the 1D scale and scale from here, snapping from here, bring it down a little bit and bring it down a little bit so it's not that tall. Besides, if you feel like you want those two to be longer or thicker, so you can get something like this. So we can get this type of a ring shank and let's go ahead to turn on those two and see if that fitting in there. So ideally, I, I do not want this higher than the green part because that's 
going to cause the problem. Um, when we have that extra, we need to file it down. All right. If everything look okay to you, we can kind of clean out the prong here. The prong that we have is stick it out way too much. So I'm going to pick up all of this on the bottom. Let's go ahead to use a bowling split. So those prong will need to be split by this guy right here. Okay. And after that, we can pick up everything on the bottom that stick it out and we can uh, delete them. I mean, hiding this one is probably easier for you to see all the extra we can delete it. And once we delete it, we can turn it back open. And then so we'll have something like this that we are not going to see the bottom. Uh, also right here at the front view, we need to cut this open. So I'm going to pick up the curve the, for the ring size that we have. And we want to go with the solid extrude it straight. And we want to extrude it on both sides right here. All right. So first of all, look like there's still a lot of uh, prongs going to see. So I'm going to hiding all my stone first and cut everything at once. If we are not going to change anything, you can do this way. I'm going to hiding the stone. I'm going to come in over here and pick up everybody right in the middle. And let's go ahead to bowling union first. It will say record, uh, it will break the history, that's okay. Uh, we also want to pick up the rest of them. And let's see if we can bowling union those first. And the very last one that's bowling union, the rest to the green one. Sometimes bowling union will fail is because we were doing the bowling split. So the seam now it's completely connected with the green one. So to, this is the easy fix. We can move it down for minus 0 0.01 millimeter. And so now this is intersect and avoid the seam. And then we can do the bowling union one more time. All right. So now it is working. We need to do the bowling difference. The whole green one is out of this ring shank. All right. So now the extra that we have there, we need to trim it off. We can simply just bullying split one more time, or you can draw a straight line going from here to here. And we also can mirror to the other side and using those two curves that we have, we can trim the middle part off. Once we trim it off, uh, they might breaking depends on where the seam is. All you need to do is join them together and use the cap command. So now we will have this ready. Let's turn it back with the stone and take a look on the render view. If you are interested in learn more stone setting for your jewelry cat design and expand your technique to do the jewelry 3D model, welcome to check out my stone setting course which I will teach you all different kinds of stone setting, including fancy cut. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next.